giving you the spirit of fear. Fear comes, fear, 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 fear. Fear comes to stop you. It wraps itself around you. I mean, my God, it's like chains going around you. It's a yoke. Fear is a yoke. But again, there is an anointing. Hey, there is an anointing that breaks every yoke. You'll be like talk kit going into the phone booth. <laughs> Coming out like Superman. Yeah. When you get beyond that spirit of fear, when you say, you know what? I know, I know this is uncharted territory for me. I know this is bigger than me. I know that God is telling me some big things. He's telling me to do some big things. I have a dream. We ask our kids, what do you want to be when they grow up? I want to be a doctor, a lawyer, a pediatrician. A veterinary caretarian, and you know, big words coming out of little mouths, coming out of little hearts. But we have to realize that that's in the spirit of that child, and God has planted that dream on the inside of that child. So that child already knows before that child gets here to earth on his or her assignment, that child already knows what the assignment is from God. Because when a child is young, they're not as far away from God as we are when we get to be 30, 40, 50, and 60 years old. That child has just left the chambers of God. That spirit of the child, you know it is the spirit that keeps us alive, right? Amen. It is the spirit of the child that is familiar with the plan and the will of God. And that child already knows what the dream is, what the assignment is. And as I talk about keeping the dream alive, a dream is a divinely suggested vision from God. Whether you are awake or whether you are sleeping, you can have a dream. I have a dream. Dr. King had a dream that was put into his heart by God. You do know he was a minister of the gospel, filled with the Holy Ghost, saved, delivered, amen, hallelujah. He might have had some issues, but we all, come on and talk. Hey, we all have some issues. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We all have some stuff that we can say, you know what? That was pretty bad. I need to check myself, amen, hallelujah. Check myself. Yeah. Amen. We often, anybody else, any witness yeah. in the room, yeah. you, you know, you get to the point where you be like, that was foul. That was yeah. bad. I need to check yeah. myself. Yeah. I need to do an attitude yeah. adjustment. Yeah. I'm just, I, I, I'm just, I'm just not doing too good today. And sometimes we have to consecrate yeah. ourselves. Yeah. That's why this consecration is so powerful amen. that we have to separate ourselves, yeah. amen, so that we can be in the presence of God, yeah. so that when we come out of his presence, we can be a better witness yeah. for God and the power that he has to transform our lives, yeah. amen, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, see, 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 the problem is that there are not too many people want to be transformed, yeah. my God, uh, not too many people want to be changed. Not too many people want to continue to press forward when life has beaten the mess out of them. My God. Uh, uh, not too many people want more of the same. Amen. Amen. I stepped out on faith before and Lord, I went through something. So fear got you holding back now because you remember how hard it was before to step out on faith. But didn't you accomplish some stuff when you stepped out on faith? Didn't God bless you when you stepped out on faith? Nobody said it was going to be easy. <laughs> I wish it was. As I was talking about uh, 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 doing things and not being afraid, I got a call from a sister who wanted me to do a book signing at Barnes & Noble uh, with my new book. I've never done a book signing at Barnes & Noble. Been out here uh, since uh, about uh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and pray. And you know what? I was supposed to call the girl the, the girl the next day. Do you know it took me two days? 
to make that phone call when I should have picked up the phone the next day. But I was fighting fear. But I was daggone if I was going to let fear get the best of me. I was going to let fear beat me down. I have never lost the fight. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hey, I mean, we might rest up for a little while. You might get me down. <laughs> But before they count to ten, I'm bouncing back up again. Come on, somebody. I'm getting up from here. I will fight you from the ground. Anybody know what it's like? I grew up in Newark. I had to fight. Anybody know it's like somebody beating you up and they seem like they're getting the best of you and they got you on the ground? And you fighting from the ground. And you kicking and punching. And you just fighting from the ground. Y'all got to learn how to fight from the ground in the name of Jesus. You might be down, but you're not out, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. You might be down, but you're not out. He had out, don't, 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 don't think because I'm down that you can count me out. Amen. So God gives us dreams. And, 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 and let's look over at, uh, in the book of... Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to try to hurry on. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. God is a strange. And there's nothing that can stop you but you. Uh, you can't blame the devil. You can't blame Bobo and them. You can't blame your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your boo. <laughs> your girlfriend, you can't blame the man, the white man, the black man. You can't blame nobody sometimes but you. Because when one door closes, ah, start looking around because God opens doors that no man can close. Hallelujah. Sometimes we push it against a closed door, but God closed that door. He closes doors that no man can open, and he opens doors that no man can close. And I declare that I am praying. That God will be the God of the open doors. And he will open up your vision in the spirit realm. So that you can see which door is open. And which door has been closed by God. So oftentimes we want to push against the door. Put our ladder up against the wrong wall. And start climbing the ladder. But God said no. That is not where I had for you to be. Amen. That is not what I ordained for you. Some of us in the wrong relationship. Man and woman are walked out on us. And we're still going after the joker. Let them go, let them go in the name of Jesus. Let them go. If they left you, they were not meant for you anyway. My God, you got to run after them and God didn't send them to you. Come on, somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to up here today. But we got to let some people go. Oh, so-called friends, phony friends, friends that don't mean you no good. Jesus said, Satan, get behind me because you don't have the things of God in mind for me. But the things of man. Man want to bring you down, but God wants to lift you up. Yes. Jesus. Man sometimes wants to bring you down, but God wants to lift you up. God wants to take you higher. Amen. God wants you to get, he has already got, let, let, let's read this. Ephesians chapter 2. Yes. Chapter 10. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Hallelujah. Right there. Let's start with verse 8. Amen. Ephesians 2, verse 8. Are you there? Amen. And it reads, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. You that save yourself, right. it is the gift of God. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. God has already established some things for you yeah. in heaven, Amen. in advance, Amen. before you got here, before the beginning of time. God has already established and ordained some things for you. That's why nobody can't take what God has for you. Because what God has for you is for you. 